Here we are. Welcome back, Mr. Timothy. We are at the mid-December mark. We always meet our mid-month, our state of the market, to make sure we can update everybody and get them prepared and ready to uh, make their sound decisions and the biggest investments of their life um, with their houses. Or, or yeah. Because uh, kids, kids is a pretty solid investment these days. <laughs> well, they kind of go hand in hand, right? You have to put a roof over the kid's head, right? True. That's true. Then they got to live in the house now and you got to be taught in the house now and they eat in the house now and they do all the everything in the mm -hmm. house now. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's been an interesting year being in this industry because you've you've seen that people have uh, been reevaluating their home life and do I want to be working remotely in this house? Do I want to be teaching re uh, my kids remotely in this house? Do I want to be shut down in this house for a few more months again? Um, so I think that I think that March and April timeframe really had people looking internally saying, do I, am I really comfortable in the house? Because, you know, some people think, Hey, my lifestyle, I'm always out and about. We like yeah. to go and do and travel. And those types of people are having to real reevaluate their home life too. Like who cares if that backyard goes straight down? I never go outside and play anyway. And now they're out doing mountain climbers and stuff just to get themselves back. Yeah. Run around, get back in shape and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah the projects um that people are are doing we saw during the shutdown the the ace hardware lines were wrapped around the store um you know uh, assembly assembly lines and kind of production lines are, are are a little bit slow so you know uh products lumber supplies those prices are going up and things of that sort so it's it's an interesting dynamic it all affects our business it really does I think they, the places like the home depot and those have been very strategic they'll have like one item jacked up to like eight bucks each and then they'll lower the price on another item because they know you need to buy this item in order to buy that item so you're gonna pay less on this one but more on that one and then it's been very interesting like nails you basically get nails for like a dollar like just giving away nails like here you go you need boards to go with these nails so take the nails but the lumber sections over there and they're eight dollars a board so very clever <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we actually went to the hardware store over the weekend to get kind of that Trex decking, but it was a an off brand. And Ace basically said, "Yeah, we don't really keep that in inventory. We just have leftover from some big orders that we had submitted. So you can go out back and see if you can find some." He didn't even know if you had any. We <laughs> went went around back. We found some. It was kind of dirty, but that's the thing about that material. You can wash it right off, and it was super discounted because they just happened to have it, and it was just laying out in the back somewhere. But um, uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's because of the assembly line supply issue or or what have you, but uh, we got a pretty good deal on it, so I was surprised. So that's where we uh, pick up our discussion here is with how busy we are as of December fifteenth, and usually we're ramping down, getting the Christmas trees ready, hanging out with the kids, and we are both now working in our offices today, and we've had meetings all day, and we've had inspections, and we're crazy busy. Yeah, yeah right? it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful yeah. thing um, because that's what, uh, you know, we want to be helping families. We want to be busy. We want to be um, doing business and helping people the best we can. We're not expecting this every year from, from here on out because December is that slowdown that sometimes we welcome. I think I've said that on previous videos that uh, you know, when you, when you bust your butt for eight months, you, you will take a 30 day reprieve. Um, and I was telling you earlier, you know, that October, November timeframe, I felt a little bit of a slowdown in my business. And I think I spoke to some, some of my colleagues who also felt that now from a lending perspective, we can fill those gaps of purchase business with refis. Rates are still extremely low, historical lows. So we just kind of dig in and find somebody that probably has an opportunity to refinance. Then December hit and the purchase business, all of a sudden, it just, it came out of nowhere. People are still buying houses. So um, in, in the past, our past videos, I may have had a data point or something to point to or something that made sense. I can't make sense of it, why we're so busy with purchases right now in December, other than the fact that rates are so low. Yeah, rates are low, inventory is low. Like none of that stuff has really changed at all. I, I, I think we're at the 15th. People can make offers on houses right now and not interfere with like Christmas and the holiday. That's my only True. assumption is that you can do the inspections, all that stuff can be wrapped up around 20th or so within that time frame. Have the holidays, have Christmas, and then you start the year fresh, January, buying a house. Taxes are perfect because you have a whole year of tax 
uh, write-offs and so forth. That's the only thing I can think of. And that's probably why that, we, because the end of November on Thanksgiving, if you would have bought it then, closings would have been Christmas. That is a great point. Great point. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. And if people are that savvy to think that far ahead, I mean, that's 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 fantastic because it does. It, your life is in sort of in shambles, especially if you're selling a house and buying another one. Your life is in shambles for 30 to 45 days while you just wait an escrow. Um, so I understand not wanting to do that during the holidays it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And then people are decorating. And I think this year out of all years, people have been taking the Christmas and Thanksgiving and they've been really like, I'm going to say savoring it. I don't use that phrase. People have been really just sitting down and just enjoying the holidays because it's been something to look forward to, something to spend some time with people. And I, 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 everywhere I'm looking, charities, people are just doing all kinds of charity donations and charity work. It's been great to see. Um, and it's partly because we're busy, but we're still sitting at home busy. So we have time to think of others. And I think of time of crisis and stuff like this, people have more thoughts of other people and so uh, there's been some positives here during the year but i think people are being uh, extra respectful of christmas i think a little bit this year and that's just my assumption well i think um i, I think that assumption kind of bleeds into our lives as industry professionals when we think that uh you know there are people out there in need of course mm -hmm. um, but also just thinking personally in the past we felt guilty maybe not taking that phone call the day before Thanksgiving or on Christmas Eve or something like that, because there's somebody on the other end who, who needs help and wants our services and things like that. And so, and, and quite frankly, just to be very honest, maybe we needed that business too. Um, but now I think we come to the point where everyone wants to just really focus on the home front, um, taking a day off on Christmas Eve or the day before Thanksgiving, not exactly a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we make sure that everything's going well with our deals, but we can take a, take a step back and just know that that phone call can be probably returned the, the day after or the day after Christmas or what have you. Um, so there's a guilt in our business to always try to answer that email, make that phone call, you know, text somebody. But um, I think that, uh, I think it's a good thing to maybe step away a little bit. It's good for your mental health. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it's been because I mean next year you're seeing all the projections and stuff. Rates are staying the same, um, right? But we're not seeing any huge rise in uh, inventory either next year. I don't think, right? Everything's going to be kind of status quo for the at least the first quarter. Is that what we're seeing? Uh, I've read really into June, so really Q Q1 and Q2 of next year, and then there may be a, a little bit of a slowdown. Um, you know, the one thing that I think is holding inventory back. Well, there's several factors. Uh, you know, a lot of the millennials and even now Gen Zers are very calculated. They want to be homeowners, but they want to make sure that they have some money in the bank. Even if they're doing, you know, a low down payment loan, they want to make sure that they're really calculated with those decisions, get what they want. They want to be out in the home, home buying market with rates being so low. But in the past, you will see this turnover of maybe the older folks, uh, maybe moving into family as they kind of hit their twilight years or moving into nursing homes or things like that. And those types of people are staying put. They don't want to go into nursing homes because of COVID. They don't want to go and be around other people, family, you know, uh, younger people who may be out and about. So they're staying put and they're not really selling those properties that people in their maybe eighties have in historically done. I, I heard Barry Habib talking about that the other day about how there's normally that turnover and that will really hinder the inventory a little bit next year in 2021 as well. So while the purchase market will be good because rates are so low, I think we're still going to be in this low inventory market where everything's going for top dollar. Yeah. And we're not uh, changing that. I never, I didn't even think of that. The, um, that angle where the uh, uh, downsizers really aren't doing a whole lot of downsizing. And if they are, it's at uh, risk. Um, yeah. The other part is I've seen a lot of the, that um, the downsizers just buy that next place, someplace, condo, whatever, and just house is vacant. And they just, here it is. So I've, I've been showing more vacant homes this year than any other year in the past, just because people are getting out, don't want to risk it, people in and out of their houses. We're taking precautions, of course, but I've seen way more vacant houses this year than ever before. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. And especially if you can do it financially, it's it's just easier um, to go ahead and get out of that property, move into the next one, and then you can have showings whenever. Um, that's the best way to do it. And, you know, the only time that 
people are handcuffed to doing that is if they have to use those net proceeds. And you know, yeah. this year, a contingent contract just gets put at the bottom of the pile. So you've found people that have actually sold that first property first, mm -hmm. maybe moved into a temporary living situation or do a rent back so that they can use those net proceeds for the ne next contract. Have you been doing any um, bridge loans recently? It's a question I get often. Yeah. Um, the bridge loans, uh, you're kind of limited on, on how much you can lend on that. And um, I think people are just really, they get concerned when they realize, okay, I'm prematurely tapping into my equity to buy another house. There are other ways to do it that maybe are a little bit easier. Um, so it's a question I get, and I've put in maybe two applications for, for bridge loans this year, and they didn't come to fruition because they found another way that it, it made a little bit more sense. Um, I mean, we, we've done things like, uh, you know, somebody knows they're going to sell a house. They just go ahead and get funds gifted by a family member. I mean, it's nice to have a family member that has tens of thousands of dollars to, to give to someone. And they say, Hey, we'll gift you this money. And then, you know, from a lending perspective, it has to be la labeled as a gift, not a debt. But after they sell their house, maybe they pay that person back. Of course, for lending standards, we, won't, we don't want to know about that. But that's something that people can navigate that. Get a gift, replenish that after the house is sold. All right. Hey, we want to keep today simple. We don't want to burden too many people. Like if you're, um, we want people to enjoy the holidays. Like if you're under contract, we have a lot of people right now under contract. Great. If not, wait till after the holidays. It seems like everybody's kind of, pumping brakes but i think january is gonna be another rush we'll have a bunch of people jumping right back into it so um we always we will do we'll do our monthly again um january and i think our monthly for january is gonna have a different tone to it it's gonna be like a let's do this tone yeah yeah no i i we need some brief period of of uh downtime to recharge our batteries because it's not going to slow down in 2021 at all i think this market is going to be very very fast so if you're looking to get into that market just know that's the reason why we do these videos just know what you're getting into because um you know you can't just kind of lackluster uh laissez-faire look at houses that eh, you know i think i might want to buy a house let's just go look at some you know your time can't be wasted because you have a you know you have a very strict schedule you have virtual learning and things of that sort uh Plus, when it comes to making offers, you really have to put your best foot yeah. forward. Yeah, and usually what I tell buyers um, when we sit down and they're not sure, because you may not know, like a first-time buyer may not know exactly what they want. You know, like those first couple, walk through the house and like critique things you like, things you don't like. Um, and my team and I, we always go through and like, that's a good thought, but I don't know if you're ever going to use that particular room. Or the feedback I get from most of my buyers is that the sunroom is, they spend all kinds of time in there. And, things like that, where we can help kind of guide you through and give you some of the feedback we get from our people. So if you've never bought a house before, we can definitely um, walk you through a lot of that stuff. But after you've seen like two or three, usually that's the time where you kind of like hone in, you know? And after that point, we, we usually ask people like, it's easier if you make a list of three things that you must have in a house as a first time buyer, you know, and make that list. And if you're with a significant other, make sure those lists, you agree on that list. And when you walk into a house, you're like, it has the garage, it's got the open kitchen and it's got the basement because those are the three things you can afford. You can focus your search. The house will have other flaws. There's no way you're going to walk into a house and it's like everything you need. That just never really happens. That's a unicorn. But if it's got the three things you love and must have, are you willing to work with those other things? Are the bathrooms maybe a little updated and you can swap those out later, you know, to help yourself and to less stress. And a little more guidance, pick three things you just love about, must have about a house. And it's just so much easier. So. And then allow the real estate professional to try to set your expectations for you. Okay, this is what I want. Okay, now how realistic is that in this zip code with this price range? And that's what you're here for. Yep, and we can do all that guiding and stuff. We, we never, we never want to, we don't pressure people. We, we give them the education you need. Like, all right, if this is what you really want, we're going to have to move on this. We don't like try to pressure. And, and I've, this, even this year, I've shown a house where there was already multiple offers, but they haven't seen any other homes. They really kind of like the house. And I'm like, you know what? We're, let's pass on this one. Just because I don't want your first set of showings to be in a multiple bid situation. The, the stress right off the bat, you're, you're going to hate the process and you're not going to enjoy it. And it really should be something you enjoy like that was fun looking at houses. That was a little bit stressful during inspections, but overall that was kind of fun. That's what we're looking for. So I've actually talked a few people out of 
making offers just because they haven't seen enough homes and there's already multiple bids. And, and it was just later on, they thanked us because it was the right thing to do. And they eventually found the one they looked for, but we want to try to do the right thing at all times. That's a, that's great advice. That is a real estate advisor and not somebody looking for a sale. And yeah. that's what, that's what you do. It's more, it's more fun that way. Cause I, I remember it. my first house and I want to treat people like my first experience was yeah. And I wanted to be better for everybody else. That's all. <laughs> so, I love it. So, all right. But, so hey, you, we have hey, our man. Christmas party coming. I'm oh, sorry. I mean to cut you off. No, that's what I was going to get to Christmas party. Tell them all about it. We love this. We love all our events. I really, really do. And I don't just say that just to say it. Like we have fun at our events every month, but the Christmas party might be the best of the best. I just, it's the holidays. We get to see everybody. Even this year, we're doing the drive through So we're still doing it at Molly's. We still have the gospel chick. And if you haven't eaten at the gospel chick, shame on you. We have the gospel chick doing to goes. We have uh, howlers filled with beer. So if you want to just drive through, you, you, if you're a client or a friend, you've already gotten the evite. We've already counted our numbers. But if you're somebody just like following and getting information from us, just know that we we, we appreciate our people. And that's the most fun event. Um, and this is what our fourth annual? Five, fifth? Oh, God. Yes, I think so. All of Molly's. All of Molly's. Because we've had different yeah. food. Then. We Remember, can count the food. That's right. <laughs> Moni, the pizza guy that first year, he made those brick oven pizzas. And then... Yeah. Bella uh, Italia. Bella Italia, that's right. And then um, my brother-in-law, John, uh, one fish, two fish, made crab, crab cakes. That was a good one. And then this year, the gospel chick. Yeah. All four delicious in their own right. And then beer. <laughs> Well, we'll see everybody, you know, with masks, drive through, we'll have some giveaways and some things like that. So excited to see people, even if it's from afar. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have outdoor capacity too. Like if you're a person who wants to sit and hang out, they have a couple of fire pits and some space heaters and stuff. So if you're like, I want to brave the weather, that's, that's up to you too, because they do outdoor seating um, every weekend. So they're, they're always out and about, but uh, we wanted to provide that drive through feature for people that were really just wanted to come say hi and didn't didn't want to have his they didn't want it they wanted to head back home and eat at home which is perfectly fine as long as we get it yeah so we want to try to appeal to everybody this year it's been a year of flexibility that's true hey sum it up sum up 2020 flexibility I'm gonna, yeah i'm gonna sum up 2020 by saying it's over soon <laughs> and next year it will have to be better it's gonna have to be better I don't know. We can go on a whole diatribe as to why that's not true, but <laughs> another time. <laughs> All right, cool. So Tim, we uh, thank you and we'll see you again after the new year. And so be safe. Yep, everybody have a great holiday. Hopefully I see some of you on Thursday. If not, Merry Christmas. Yep. And have a good new year, sir. We won't see you for new year, but we'll, we'll see you soon. I'll bring back some snow from Pennsylvania when I go visit the family. I love it. Enjoy yourself, my friend. I visit it. That way I can come back and appreciate not having it. <laughs> They're, they're going to get a foot or two. I just know it. You're going to get hammered. They're, they're, they are, uh, this weekend, they're supposed to get three feet. Ugh. They don't flinch. That's just, like Whatever. I like snow, but that's too much. That's it's too much lot. snow. It's a lot. Yeah. So there'll be some snow. The kids love it. So, and I have to, <laughs> Jen doesn't, Jen doesn't do any of the outdoor playing. She's like, here, you, you grew up in this. You go out and go sled riding. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, well, yeah. thanks for having me on. Yep. Um, I appreciate everybody. And like I said, hope, hopefully I see some familiar faces on Thursday. All right, sir. You have a good one.